I'd love to ask what you would do about Big Farmer's hold, how Big Farmer would be punished for their role during the pandemic, if you believe there's any corruption there, and, it, and it, during the opioid crisis. How can you, uh, I wonder, are you willing, Vivek, to apply the same kind of definitive discourse and uh, punitive measures to the pharmaceutical industry as you would to deep state corruption within the FBI, particularly given your relationships within pharma? Well, it's just an extension of the deep state. I, I just want to say something, Russell. Actually, there's a good chance to address it because many people, and I understand where they're coming from because if I didn't know better, I'd be saying the same thing. Oh, did this guy make his money off a biotech company and is that tied to big pharma? That is about, I, my relationship to big pharma is like the equivalent of saying Rumble's relationship to big tech, okay? I started a company that challenged big pharma on the terms of its own corruption. This is why most people in big pharma despise me. I mean, that's just a hard fact. I called a lot of their bluffs and used it to also develop medicines that they claim deserve not to be developed, which are actually helping thousands of people today that they systematically didn't develop. And by the way, it's also why I like to back businesses like Rumble. So I just wanted to address that out of the gate. It is good when someone like Chris starts Rumble to stand up to YouTube. It is good when people like me at least set out to start biotech companies to challenge the way Big Pharma behaves. They don't love me very much, but a big part of the problem is the tie-in with government. And there's no way I was going to address that by being one biotech startup, even though that's a bigger company now. It's tiny compared to Big Pharma. There's no way it's going to be addressed without extricating the linkage with government itself. That's really where the problem rests. And so a big part of that corruption starts at the FDA. And I'll get to the vaccine point in a minute where I think absolutely was there corruption? Yes, there was. Was there systematic lying? Absolutely there was. But you got to understand it deeply. So just think about this on its own terms. Nobody can argue with the point I'm going to about to make. I don't believe so. Not even people who claim to disagree with us. The same FDA that made it take boatloads of money for me to develop the medicines that are approved now. I can tell you right now, those medicines could have been developed for a tiny fraction of the price, which means they could cost a tiny fraction of the price. That FDA says it has to take 10 years and a billion dollars to develop any medicine, and we won't even let you try it. That you or I, in a fully informed way, after it's gone through thousands of patients, no, it has to be tens of thousands. We can't even have the right to try it unless it's been through that process because it can't be deemed to be safe or effective enough. Now, I actually take issue with that. I'm a strong libertarian when it comes to this. If I wanna take it, I'm gonna take it. I don't want you getting in the way, especially if I have a life-threatening disease, God forbid. There are people who are left to die rather than to be able to take that risk for themselves. And by the way, I believe the same thing when it comes to veterans who suffer from PTSD, who turn to fentanyl, who could be going to ayahuasca or ketamine or other psychedelics that are far better options than fentanyl. This is something that, again, the FDA and the DEA and the federal government step in and say, no, 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 you don't even have the right to actually make the choice. That's the same FDA <laughs> that said now we have in the same federal government with the FDA that says we're going to shepherd in and push vaccines for COVID in less than one year. And to top it off, it's not that you only get the choice to take it, which I have no problem with, but that you have a mandate to take it which I do have a problem with. I also have a problem with the lies they told in that approval. So those two things, you can't believe those at the same time, right? The same agency that stops you from even having the right to try medicine, say you have no right but not to take it in the case of a vaccine that's part of a favored political class, that's part of the lobbying industrial complex. And so, you know, I see it in this election as well. I'm the only candidate in this race, save for Donald Trump, but the rest of the candidates, same thing happened in 2015 who's not a super PAC puppet. Millions of dollars flowing into super PACs, propping up the other candidates. I don't even have TV ads up in most of the country. There are TV ads being paid for for every other candidate. If you look at the per percentage point in the polls, how much is somebody spending? For Jeb Bush, Scott Walker last time, for every one of the other candidates this time, millions of dollars being spent on TV ads per percentage point in the polls. For Donald Trump in 2015, for me this time, tens of thousands of dollars, right? That's organic. So I would make a deal with anybody in this race to say, well, I'll do this deal with Joe Biden in the general election. If you agree to turn down super PAC dollars, I will do the same. You know, it's not technically you turn it down, but you shun them, okay? You don't participate in their fundraisers. You say you don't want their ads on TV, then they won't put them up. 
I will make that deal publicly with Joe Biden in the general election. It probably won't be Joe Biden, actually. I, I doubt they're going to let him run against me. It'll be whoever, whichever other puppet they put up. But I will make that same deal in this Republican primary. If the rest of this Republican primary field agrees to say that we will shun super PAC money, I will do the same thing because I think it's a corrupting influence. And the largest lobbying organization in human history is none other than Big Pharma. And I think that we need to extricate capitalism from democracy. OK, I have no problem with innovators. Not only I have no problem, I'm proud to be one of them. Innovators who take risks, develop medicines, are honest about it, say when they work, admit when they don't work. I've had instances of both. Be honest about it. But when the ones that do work, work, let it not be the product of government corruption. Just tell the people, here's the value proposition. It's your choice whether you take it or not, rather than applying mandates, as opposed to the backdoor mechanism of hiding myocarditis risks, pushing something through, and saying that we're not confident enough being able to convince the public to take it on their own value proposition. So we need you, the government, that shepherded this uniquely through, to also be the one that mandates it while we get paid in the process. That is corrupt. And yes, I will put an end to it. And one specific thing I can tell you on day one that's doable is roll back the special liability protection that was enshrined in law for vaccine manufacturers during the COVID-19 pandemic to say that they can't be sued for product liability. It's like the equivalent of Section 230 for big tech. It's crony capitalism. It's corruption. You don't need special forms of liability. Everyone should play by the same set of rules. That just gives you a sense for where I'm at on this.